Our big stat is brought to you by Gatorade. Volleyball season starts this week. If history is to be our guide, Wisconsin figures to be in the picture. Badgers have won the last four conference crown. It's tied for the second longest streak in conference history. And the prognosticators like their chances this year. They're picked to win the league again, ranked number two in the nation. Their head coach, as promised, Kelly Sheffield, is today's big interview. Coach, thanks so much for joining us. I, I realize it was just an exhibition this weekend against UIC, but still you guys swept through them. What did you take from watching your team against another opponent? Yeah, a lot of things that we already knew. I mean, we, we've got size, we're physical, uh, our, our kids love to compete, uh, you know, but, uh, you, you know, that first time that you play in front of crowds and, and uh, against opponents, there's, you know, you've got those nerves that you're trying to work through. And so uh, they had fun, but there's a lot of work that's, that's in front of us. You had Yuvia Orzel start at Libero. Help people understand the significance of that move and how you thought that worked. Yeah, I mean, she's talented. The, the, there's a lot of things she can do on the court. And, and uh, you know, when you've got Timmy Thomas and, and uh, uh, Sarah Franklin on the outside, Yuli Orzel has been a starting outside hitter for us for the past two years. And, and we want to try to find her uh, a way on the court somehow. And so taking a look at her in the, in the libero position, she played for set one. And then uh, Golche Guztekin played, uh, who's last year's libero, played set two and three. And then we brought uh, our young kid freshman Sage Damro in for the fourth set. So that's one of the great things about the exhibitions is you can move some people around and take it, take different looks. But uh, I thought Yulia looked really comfortable in that role. And you had a similar opportunity to get different looks at your team this off season. You guys took a tour yeah. of Europe, which looked amazing to me. I mean, uh, yeah. Turkey, Slovenia, Italy, Switzerland. I'm sure on the court it was really valuable, but off the court. Which of those places made the biggest impact on you? Well, it's a uh, me personally. Maybe it was Istanbul, just because of how different that place is. I mean, it's uh, I I loved all of those places. It's a, uh, I I don't know. I here I am talking about Istanbul, but but you go to Zurich, Switzerland, and that, that's a pretty sweet place as well. The, the trip was fantastic. Uh, the group of people that we took were, were great. The level of competition was really high. Uh, it, it's, uh, it, it, was, it was a great, great two weeks. Give people a sense for the level of volleyball, the, the teams that you played against there, and how they compare to teams in the Big Ten and, and the mm. elite teams in the U.S. Yeah, it's uh, pr probably very similar. The teams that we played were, uh, I would say, the top half of the Big Ten is probably where I'd fit those those guys. Uh, we played two teams in in Turkey that were probably right up there, and then we played uh, uh, we played a team in Italy. Uh, quite a few of those players were still on the court from when we played them four years earlier, and a couple of their players were just at volleyball nations league uh, the the previous week. So the level that we were playing against in Italy was was really high you know and that but that's one of the things that you've got to adjust to you're you're walking around you're touring you're seeing different places and and uh, you know and then later on in the day you're trying to get out in the court and compete and you, maybe your body and your legs aren't feeling like they usually do uh, maybe you're a little bit tired but you got to find a way to, to compete and, and I thought our players did that one of the players that's back competing for you is Sarah Franklin I know she had an off-season health scare where is yeah. she in her return? I, mean, I know she's back out on the court, but do you feel like she's at 100%? And give us a, an idea of what she's been through. It's uh, unbelievable. I mean, she goes into surgery, and, and you know, the first thing her surgeon said is there's a really good chance that your career is done. And uh, you know, it's uh, you know, and that's that's a hard thing to take. <laughs> you know, obviously mentally and emotionally, and and things. And she she got kind of a best scenario that played itself out uh, there in the hospital, and and came back, and and uh, you know, the better part of two or th uh, you know, just under three months, she's on blood thinner 
nerves, but she's doing everything she can to get back. And she looks great right now. I mean, she looks as she did everything she could to put herself in a position to be playing well. You know, uh, anybody that was in the field house on Saturday and just watched the physicality and, you know, how she carried herself would, would wonder, you know, was she even, did she even have any issues? But they were really, really serious and really, really scary and just really proud of, of the position that she's put herself in. And man, I don't think I've ever seen a kid enjoy being out on the court more than she is every single day. Well, that is tremendous. Uh, I know you got two really good players in the portal. You had already mentioned Temi Thomas Ilara, who came over from Northwestern, Carter Booth from Minnesota. How have you seen each one of them fit into your lineup? Yeah, they, they fit in great. You know, we, we were fortunate we got we got Carter in the in the spring, and so she was able to work with us. She fits in. I mean, just the strength of her personality and just the, you know, how much she just uh, hangs on about every word to try to learn. She's just, she is mentally tough, competitor, uh, no fear whatsoever. Timmy got in and got a couple weeks of practice right before we went to Europe trip. She was there for part of our Europe trip and then came back and was part of graduation ceremonies uh, there at Northwestern but you know she also wants to learn she's going into her fifth year and so it's a really short window that we've got with her uh, but people love playing with her and she's she's a joy to, to coach every day coach it's amazing I mean we were showing the success that you've had uh, Marquette's been a good program too in the state so I mean it feels like volleyball in Wisconsin is just in an amazing place how have you, you seen yeah. the success of your program in particular impact youth volleyball in Wisconsin uh, the, the club scene has always, I think, had a presence here in, in pockets. I think that goes back, you know, 20, 30 years. There's some, been some pockets that have been really good. There's been some high school teams that have been really good. But you're seeing the growth just really expanding. The, the level of coaching has gotten a lot deeper. There's been a lot more clubs than maybe one or two. Uh, you know, it's, and the high school programs are really going to the different level. And you're seeing all these, you know, fan supports that, that's, that's filling these arenas. You know, we're, we're, you know, we're playing Marquette, and we're knocking on the door of being able to get 17,000 people to watch that match in Fiserv Arena. Uh, but it's a big deal. It's a uh, it's it's a sport that so many young girls and and the boys are growing up, and it's it's what they want to do at a very young age. It's kind of the cool sport here uh, in this state, and uh, that's a real tribute to to the high school and club training that that is going on. We'll talk a lot more about this during the course of the year. I'm sure we'll have you on again at some point. But just interested, give people an idea of the impact of expansion on Big Ten volleyball. I mean, just looking at the top ten, Oregon is in there. USC is a ranked team. Yeah. You've got Washington receiving votes. I mean, this is already a loaded league. What's it going to look like a year from now? All right, so, Dave, it's, it's the... I don't think anybody would disagree that the Big Ten has been the most dominant conference in volleyball for, for a little while now. And there, there's only been 12 or 13 teams that have ever won a national championship. You just brought in Washington, USC, and UCLA, and all three of those schools have won national championships. Those are three of the 12 that, that have won it. And oh yeah, Oregon, who's played in the national championship match as well. And so it just got significantly tougher in the sport of volleyball by adding those four teams. Well, I know we are excited about it. We've got our first volleyball matches on our air coming up this weekend. It is the Big Ten, Big 12 Challenge. You'll be participating yeah. in that in Minneapolis. You've got Baylor and TCU. I know Baylor, a really formidable team yeah. that beat you a year ago. Give us a quick scouting report on them before we let you go. Yeah, thanks for reminding everybody we lost that match. <laughs> oh, well, it's a, uh, I'm trying to build it up <laughs> so that people watch, Coach. They watch the room. We've had match. amazing. <laughs> we've had amazing matches with Baylor over the year in the NCAA tournament in the regular season. We played them year after year, and the, the matches have been unreal. The talent level that they bring in is really, really impressive. TCU has really turned their program around. They had a great season last year. We saw them in the NCAA tournament, the second round. Uh, they are, they bring in a transfer from from Texas that we think is really going to help them. But it's been an 
awesome way to start the season with uh, with both of those teams and you know and taking those matches up in Minneapolis where they'll also play the University of Minnesota uh, that weekend as well it should be a great way to start off this the season cannot wait again we're thrilled to be airing it here on the Big Ten Network Kelly Sheffield yeah best of luck this year congratulations on all your success in Madison and we'll look forward to catching up with you again down the road appreciate it thanks Dave as I mentioned, we've got that challenge on our air this weekend. A huge doubleheader on Friday. The Badgers taking on those 15th-ranked Bears we were talking about. Then the reigning conference player of the year, Taylor Landfair, leading the 7th-ranked Gophers against TCU. Coverage starts at 5.30 Eastern, powered by Unleaded 88 on the Big Ten Network and the Fox Sports app.